Hi, hello, my name is Patrick and I got a degree in info design so that you don't have to. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to play around with text in InDesign. So I'll be showing you some of the key tools you need to use to manipulate text. And then we will be instilling some, uh, some visual hierarchy into our typography using those tools. So let's jump on to InDesign. Okay, so here we have the poster that we started on the last video and it's got my content placed here. <clears throat> and again, all I've really added, I've added these boxes here um, using the uh, right the rectangle tool um, because I wanted to just have placeholders for where my figures are gonna go. Um, ideally, at this point, you would have your figures done and you'd have them placed on your page as well. But uh, I am a grad student and far from perfect, so I inevitably have not got my figures done yet. Um, so these boxes will do um, for now. Uh, I've also added acknowledgments and references because those are things that you should have usually and I forgot them as per usual. <laughs> okay, so in the last video I showed you uh, some of the tools that will be important for you to use. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to use um, some of these panels over here to modify text. So um, this sidebar, you might yours might look different than mine because um, this is a pretty customizable uh, sidebar so unlike these which aren't customizable you can add and take away whatever you want from this sidebar so here are like these kind of move around you can put them wherever you want uh, on this sidebar uh, you order them and so the way that you can add things is go to window up here and then these are all those um, panels you can add and so I mean you're not going to even need to use more than four or five of them um, but you know just you, you can see the sheer quantity of things you can do with InDesign, which is why it's really cool. And you can really add a lot of personality once you get the basics done. As far as which ones you should use or have for uh, making a poster design, my suggestion is if you go to workspaces, um, there's a, these are some predefined selections of different uh, panels. And so Essentials Classic is going to be good for our purposes. And the ones that I'm going to be showing you today are all type related. So I'm just gonna reorganize them so that they're ones I'm showing you at the top so you can actually see them because I am kind of in the way <laughs> over here. Um, so I'll just rearrange them so that these are at the top. So the ones you should be familiar with for typography are the character panel, which just has all of your font information. So you have your typeface, your weight, and your point size. And that's kind of all you're gonna really need to know for this panel. In the paragraph panel, um, what you got here is your justifications. So you can, you know, um, center uh, the often ignored right align, <laughs> which is a uh, poor thing, never used, but probably for good reasons. It's kind of hard to read when it's right aligned. You can also use these, you know, uh, kind of more boxy justifications. So this is what newspapers use. Um, and we'll get in a couple more of these uh, properties, but that's good for now. And you can also, um, might be more intuitive, if you select text, you'll notice that this top bar becomes kind of like a Microsoft Word. You can choose your font here, justify here. This might be more intuitive for you. Uh, so you can use it up here as well. Uh, if you deselect the text, it will change because these, um, these tools are dependent on what you have selected. So I like to use these kind of flyout bars because that's just what I'm used to, but you might be more used to uh, using the top bar. Either one's fine. So now that we've learned the two panels we're gonna need to actually make our uh, modify our text to give it some hierarchy, uh, let's jump into that. I'm actually, no, before we do that, I have made a decision to actually, I think what I'm gonna do is make my conclusion really big and powerful and it kind of be like a the second level. So you're gonna see my title first and then my conclusion. And this is kind of uh, a concept taken from this phenomena in the research poster design world called the uh, better poster. So essentially what the better poster is, it's an attempt to you know really increase the user experience of a poster at a poster symposium by making, you know, kind of minimizing everything besides your conclusions and just making essentially your whole poster just that one main point. Um, and it's really good for, you know, when you're presenting next to your poster, but I think it kind of overly minimizes everything else to some degree. Um, I always like my posters to be able to stand alone because 
Yes, they're for poster symposium often, but they're also gonna be hung in the hallways of your school maybe, or you know, you can send these posters to people to, for the, to understand your research without you explaining them. So while I like this concept, I think it makes it easier to use at a symposium, um, especially compared to the you know overly text heavy typical research poster. This is a great alternative and it is, you know, definitely I like where their head's at thinking about the user experience. Um, so I'm gonna try to maybe you know, take elements of that. I like the idea that we're gonna really blast our findings, make them easy to see, um, but I'm not gonna minimize everything to this degree. So we'll kind of do like a little hybrid poster. Um, so I'm gonna make my conclusion pretty big in this sidebar here so that you can really see it clearly. And then also if you wanna like read the intro methods and results, they're not gonna be um, overly minimized. So now that I've vaguely drafted out where everything's gonna go, we can start working on my text. And um, I've also, so I've chosen a typeface for this project. Um, the typeface I'm using is called Avenir. It is one of my favorites. Um, it has a lot of different weights. It's easy to read and it's beautiful. Um, so <laughs> I use it a lot. Um, so it's always easiest to start on your level one, um, their biggest, boldest text. Um, so you just, you know, make your text box bigger, highlight your text, and now let's um, make it bolder. So let's go as bold as we can get with this font. And let's make this bigger too. Um, so we can just experiment. Let's see how big we can get it. Let's see, 200. Oh, <laughs> that's too big. Uh, yeah, zooming out, no. Let's split the difference, 125. Oops. If you have it so you can only see like part of your text and you just select what you can see, um, when you change it, uh, you'll notice it only changes the stuff you selected. So just push control all to select the entire text box. Um, I'm gonna go with 115. Oh, perfect, you see, there we go. That's a good size, I think, for now. We can always change things and designing is experimental um, before anything else. So I'm sure we'll come back to this and maybe tweak it, but that looks good for now. Um, so one thing you're gonna need to do while you're designing is you can see we got all these different things going on that aren't actually gonna be viewed in the print form, right? So we have these bounding boxes, these guidelines. So to look at it without all that stuff, push um, W on your keyboard. And now we can see what it looks like in the print view and W just toggles between these two views. Um, so I can already tell you right now that my margins are way too small actually. And I'm gonna wanna push my content off the edge of the page more. Um, and if that's the case, my gutters are probably too small too. And that's okay, like I said, design's experimental. So we can just go ahead and go to layout, margins and columns and fix this up. Um, so I'm gonna go to a full inch, maybe an inch, a little over an inch. And I'm gonna make my gutter a full inch for now. Okay, and then just realign everything. Okay, that's good for now. You don't need to fix everything because as we change text sizes, um, things are gonna move around because they're gonna get bigger and smaller and whatnot. So don't spend too much time making everything line up now. Wait to do that until after you've gotten your text um, all sorted out. So next up, my name. My name doesn't really have like a specific level. I want it to kind of sit somewhere between maybe um, the subheading and the body text. So I'll make it, so I'll make it a pretty heavy, and bigger, definitely. 45, sure. All right, so we, now we got that all sorted. Um, I'm happy with that for now. Let's work on the rest of our text, which is gonna be our, our subheadings and our body. So <clears throat> let's start with our subheadings. Um, again, let's go bolder. Easiest way to just really separate that from the body copy. Let's go bigger. It's pretty big, pretty bold. Let's see what it looks like from far away. Shoot. And then print view. Okay, so yeah, that's already really standing out from the body copy. However, you can see that the space between my subheading and my body copy is really tight. And I wanna increase that, let my subheading breathe a little bit. Um, so the space between two lines um, is called letting. And so I'm gonna increase the letting of this. Um, so my paragraph panel, um, Right here in the middle is an option called space after. That's the space after a paragraph. So I'm gonna pump that up to a, let's do a about a, th a third of an inch. 
Yeah, so that already looks better. Now my subheading can breathe a little bit. Okay, so one more thing I'm gonna do to this, and this is a pro tip. Um, so I'm, you can actually, like I just increased the space between lines called a letting. Um, I can also increase the space between letters and that's called kerning. Um, and I wanna kern this a little bit because letting things breathe is like my philosophy and design, open up white space. So I'm just gonna create a little bit of kerning here. So to do that, select your text, hold down option on your keyboard, and then use the right arrow key to increase the spacing between letters and the left to decrease. So just a little bit. Overdoing it is easy and it will look bad. Um, I think I've gone one too far, there we go. There we go, it just kind of opens it up a little bit. I think it looks nice. All right, now let's just finish off our textual hierarchy um, with the body copy. Um, as far as the bodied copy, it already looks pretty good. So um, it's kind of like the, the regular weight of this type family. Um, I think maybe it could be a little bit bigger. So the rule is with body copy, never go below 24 size font um, on a poster. You should be able to read it from kind of far away. And I would say 24 is even pretty small. Um, so I think the biggest problem with pretty much every research poster is it's just too much text. Um, so one thing that I do is I'll usually write out like what I want to say essentially like I've done here um, for this like just this is example text um, that I kind of stream of consciousness <laughs> wrote um, that makes no sense. But but what I would usually do is go through and just remove every single possible word that isn't needed, make my sentences more concise, reduce everything without losing the main points of your poster. Uh, you're kind of walking this really fine line between you know, taking too much away to where your research can't really be understood fully and then having too much where no one's gonna even engage with your research. Um, if you have a bunch of text, I am hate to tell you this, but no one's gonna read it. Maybe one person who's super interested in what you've done, but for the most part, people are gonna be terrified by your wall of text. So that's a little my little diatribe about too much text. I will work on reducing this as I go. Um, for now, let's just, I think this looks good. Um, the way it is, we can play around with it later if we find that it needs to be a little different. Maybe for fun, I'll bump it up to 33 point, <laughs> just for funsies. Okay, so now we have to do apply what we've done here to the rest of our sections. And in InDesign, that's really easy. This is the last of the panels I'll show you today called Paragraph Styles. Again, if you can't see it, Window, Styles, Paragraph Style. So <clears throat> let's open up the paragraph. Uh, styles fly out and so what we're gonna do is highlight the subheading we've made and click this little plus button here oh which you can't see there we go and click this little plus button here and that will create a new paragraph style so let's double click on it rename it to what we just created which is a subheading um, and here you can see all of the things we've done to our text um, to make it that kind of uh, level two subheading. Click OK. And now when I go to methods, select that and click subheading, everything I did to the first is applied, including the kerning, the letting, the font weight, the font size, everything. Um, so that's super easy. Um, and if you wanna make a change later on, you realize, ooh, I maybe kerned it a little bit too much. You can just go into subheading um, and you can fix everything from here. So maybe we want this to actually be um, maybe a little bit less heavy, we've decided. Boom. Let's do the same thing now for the body copy. Click OK. Now we have our body copy defined, and we can just go ahead and apply that to the rest of our body copy. Do this for all your sections. Um, also, acknowledgments and references. I probably don't need to highlight them as much as I wanted to do with like discussion methods and intro and result because these are kind of like, they're I mean, they're important to include your poster, but they're kind of auxiliary. You don't really need this to, to understand the research. It's not really part of the story. And, but for now let's fix this conclusion text, which I want, like I said, to be my kind of my level two, honestly. I want it to be bigger than these subheadings. I want it to be the second thing people see. Let's make it bolder. And let's make it bigger. Bigger still. 
All right. That is pretty big. <laughs> and I like it. We might have to fix this later. Uh, we'll see um, once we add more design elements how well it plays with everything else. But one thing I noticed while I was doing that is I actually have hyphenate on. So if you go to your um, body copy, by default InDesign will have hyphenate on. So what that does is it hyphenates words that kind of go um, over lines. This is not ideal. I don't think ever. It's never, it makes it always harder to read. You don't want hyphenate on. Um, so we can fix that with our paragraph styles really easily. It's double click body um, under hyphenation. Just unclick hyphenate. There, problem solved. And that should be applied now to all of our texts. This is okay. We have come a long way from where we started. Um, we definitely have some textual hierarchy. I think we might have some problems with conflicting hierarchy here. This might be almost too, too big, too bold. It almost feels like a level one. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll play around with it as we go. I think for now I'm happy with this. So the next thing is gonna be adding color. That is really going to push this poster to the next level. So that'll be the next video and I will see you there. Bye.